differently than the structural improvements to a fellow named Henry George. How many of you have heard of Henry George? Don't be shy. My God. I'll tell you, if I did this for the American audience, I would have maybe one hand. So this is actually pretty impressive if there are a few people. All right. During his lifetime, he was probably one of the best known American citizens inside his country and outside the borders of the United States. There was probably no other American citizen who was better known outside our borders than perhaps Mark Twain. Thomas Edison, this guy was world renowned. But I will wager you know his ideas. How many of you ever have played this particular game? Monopoly. Ah, more hands, you see. How do you win at Monopoly? Anybody, how do you win this game? Bankrupt everyone else. There you go. You buy as much real estate as you can, you develop the heck out of it, and you sit there like a hungry spider waiting for your family and friends to land on that space and you can bankrupt them and wipe them out. <laughs> now you win this game? All right. Henry George says that's exactly the way the U.S. economy works. You have the landlords grabbing up all the land and impoverishing everybody else. It may not come as any surprise that the original patent in 1904 for Monopoly was uh, created by an ardent follower of Henry George. This game was actually created to illustrate the evils of land speculation. <laughs> That's not exactly what we're trying to teach you, right? Okay. So Henry George's idea was that, you know, one solution for this landlordism, of course, was why not just nationalize all the land? Why don't you just have public ownership of the land? But he was too much of a Jeffersonian Democrat, too much of a practical politician proposed that. Instead, he proposed, let's just tax away all of the capital gains. And if you did that and you removed all other taxes on labor, on capital, the taxes on capital gains, removing all of that, that increase, that appreciation would be enough to pay for everything else. Okay? It was the single tax movement, is what it was known as. Well, his influence spread beyond the borders of the United States by the fact that this guy got on a steamship every once in a while, and he went other places. And his first trip outside the United States was in 1881, where he comes to Ireland, and then from Ireland to, to England. Of course, he lands in Ireland, gives a speech about the evils of landlordism, and is promptly thrown in jail. And that's a rabble rouser. But that's fortunate because, because that becomes wonderful publicity for his next stop, which is London, where he fills lecture halls. And George Bernard Shaw and people like this come and hear his lecture about the evils of land speculation and, um, uh, and the, the advantages of the single tax. But another person who attends one of his early lectures is an Englishman by the name of Ebenezer Howard. Now, you probably are far more familiar with Ebenezer Howard than most Americans are. Of course, he proposed, influenced by Henry George, he says, well, you know, we really ought to capture the land gains. We ought to treat land and buildings in a different way. And instead of taxing it all away, let's have community ownership of the underlying land and individual ownership and cooperative ownership of the structures on that land. And he proposes a system of garden cities, eventually 32 garden cities, as you probably well know, better than I, were built in England based on Ebenezer Howard's ideas, <coughs> starting with the first two garden cities of Letchworth and Bowen. In the early days, before the kind of conversion to uh, the way they are today, these were all built on leased land with individual ownership, different private parties owning the, the improvements. These ideas jumped back across the Atlantic, and we created model communities, model villages, and single tax communities of our own. This was a Georgia's community, a garden city outside of Philadelphia, Arden, Delaware. Uh, appropriately enough, it has its Henry George Memorial Green right in the middle of the settlement, and the fellow that's standing behind it is Van Temple, who happens to be the vice president. National CLT Network, 
And he was actually raised in Arden, Delaware. He's a little, uh, it's kind of funny to have these little cycles. But when Dev steps down next year as the president, Van will be the new president of the National CLT Network. Now, there were many experiments, right, based on this idea of land leasing, community ownership of land, individual ownership of the improvements on it. These were prototype land trusts. And when it came time to create the first community land trust in the United States, the founders, the pioneers, drew heavily on a lot of these experiments. In England, the United States, the Jewish National Fund in Israel, um, founded by Arden Georgis, Georgis Zionist, at the turn of the last century. 14% of all the land in Israel is owned by the Jewish National Fund. They leased the land under 99 year ground leases to uh, you know, cooperative agricultural ventures, kibbutzim, moshavim, um, and, and individual enterprises. And of course, the capital of Australia, Canberra, was created on leased land. So we had a lot of these experiences, experiments in uh, leased land communities. They were land trusts, but they weren't community land trusts. So it took kind of the civil rights movement and some experimentation here in the United States in the 60s to graft on the second set of elements that make it a community land trust. They make it not just a land trust, but a community land trust. And these are the elements uh, that we build into the model, the way we structure the organization. They are membership organizations. We draw a circle around a geographic place that we call our community. It could be a single neighborhood, multiple neighborhoods, an entire city, an entire county. Uh, we have actually two community land trusts, one in Rhode Island and one in Delaware, that are organized on a statewide basis. Those are pretty tiny little states. Yeah. Anyone who lives within that geographic area who elects to become a member of the corporation to pay five dollars, twenty dollars a year, membership dues, can become a voting member of this corporation. Those voting members of the corporation are the community members. And they nominate and elect a third of the seats on the board of directors of the community land trust. The people who live on the land, who live in the buildings on the land trust land, the businesses that occupy space, in, our, um, in the buildings on our land, they get to nominate and elect a third. And then the final third on the board of the typical community land trust, we call public interest representatives. In some CLTs, those are actually public officials. Those are municipal officials. In others, it may be, you know, you'll have your banker, your lawyer, your housing association representative, your, the biggest church in your community. Every single team kind of plays around with that last third in, in different ways. These are the people who put the C in CLT. These four individuals are really the ones who looked at some of these Garden City experiments, these model villages, and they said, you know, it's not enough just to have community ownership of the land. We need to have these democratic elements and accountability governance if this is going to really work particularly for low-income people. The first of these four is a fellow named Slater King. Slater King was the president of the Albany Movement. The Albany Movement was the first initiative, the first grassroots campaign in the modern civil rights movement in the United States to have as, as its goal the complete eradication of discrimination in this deep south Georgia city. And of course, the uh, the White City Council and the Sheriff vowed that this would never happen. It took them a good six years of protesting and filling the jails of, of Albany before they were finally able to win their political rights and get access to public accommodations, things like this. But during those years, when they were pushing and pushing to remove what was known as Jim Crow,